I have never been a huge fan of SUVs, but I love a fast car as much as the next petrol head. So in this video, I'm gonna give you five particularly fast super SUVs that you can buy for under around 50,000 pounds that depreciated pretty massively and still offer a level of luxury. Genuinely, the performance of some of these cars troubles supercars, it's ridiculous. So if you like this kind of content and wanna see more like it, do hit the like button and subscribe as well if you're new here. Without further ado, let's get into the video. <laughs> We're kicking things off with one of the most typical super SUVs out there, and the one you'd probably have expected to see when you clicked on this video. It's the Range Rover Sport SVR from the second generation Range Rover Sport, and specifically the pre facelift model that's available within our price range. It's an absolute monster, and even if, like me, you're not massively into ranges or even SUVs, you almost have to accept that this thing sounds like an absolute brute, thanks to that 5 litre supercharged V8 that produces 542 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 4.5 seconds, which also gets an active of exhaust system to help enhance the sound. SVR is Land Rover sports brand for those of you that aren't aware and it stands for Special Vehicle Racing, responsible for many rapid cars that come out of the JLR factory. Compared to the standard sport then, the SVR looks that bit more aggressive with the different body kit, including the massive grills on the front bumper and the diffuser on the rear, plus the 21 inch sportier alloys. That engine comes out of the Jaguar F-Type and the gearbox shifts 50% faster than the standard car, plus the whole chassis was modified to give the car better performance in turns, which is paired with ridiculously advanced dampers. This is all mixed with an interior which is just a touch more sporty than the standard car, keeping the focus on luxury. Considering these were almost £120,000 adjusted for inflation back in 2015, these are listed anywhere from around £40,000 today, and 50k will get you a 2017 model with around 60k on the clock. The engine is known to have fewer issues than many other less performant JLR cars, but it's still not perfect, and electrical seem to have been a common problem for some owners. Recently, we've seen the release of the Porsche Cayenne Turbo GT, which is 100% the SUV I would buy if I had the money and the lust for an SUV. But of course, that's a ridiculously expensive car, and it's selling for overs second hand, so certainly hasn't depreciated yet. A car that has dropped, though, is the second generation Porsche Turbo S, specifically the post faces example, which started at almost £136,000 back on release adjusted for inflation, but now is available anywhere from around the £43,000 mark, with 50k bagging your 2016 model with around 60k on it. But don't let the depreciation scare you, the Turbo S badge that you'd usually see on a 911 is used to good effect on this beast, with its 4.8 litre twin turbocharged V8 block that puts out 542 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 4.4 seconds. And that power is no joke, the Turbo S was actually used to pull a 265 tonne Airbus A3 right after the diesel S was used for the same job, meaning it had the Guinness World Record for the heaviest aircraft pulled by a production car, which is all down to having 800 newton meters of torque. That means yes, you can pretty much tow anything with this if you so please, which I suppose is a good way of judging a super SUV. The exterior is meant to be somewhat reminiscent of the 911 shape that Porsche are renowned for, and the handling too shouldn't deviate far from your Porsche expectations, because that's what the whole brand is renowned for, meaning on track it can actually hold its own, which I saw firsthand at their Silverstone track. For me, the whole package of the KN is really nice, as the interior is also typically Porsche, and in an unassuming spec, it looks way more modern than it actually is. Auto box issues, coil packs and air suspension pump failure are some of the main things you should watch out for with these. Taking third thanks to it being slightly quicker to 60 than the Range Rover despite it sharing the same engine is the Jaguar F-Pace SVR and I've spent a fair bit of time in these F-Paces and can tell you straight up they are effectively a Range Rover Sport just tuned to feel more sporty as opposed to the opulence of the Range Rover Sport. So yes it has that 5 litre supercharged V8 engine that makes 542 brake horsepower which will get it to 60 in 4.1 seconds which is four tenths faster than the Range Rover Sport to add to that sportier point. The story isn't a million miles away from the Range Rover Sport of course, given they're both JLR creations and part of the reason why this car was much cheaper than the Range Rover on release was that it was in many respects much cheaper. The interior is nice but some owners do complain about the infotainment being pretty weak and the overall package as well feeling a little bit more dated than some of the other cars on this list that it rivaled on release. But it does come with bigger brakes, revised suspension, an electronic LSD and a bunch 
bunch of other fiddly bits like the more aggressive exterior, but it's worth mentioning that a lot of reviews found it didn't perform as well as some of its competitors when being driven hard. But to be honest, I think the SVR is more about going fast in a straight line and making a loud noise than it is about performing well. Considering this was the cheapest SUV to buy new on this list when you adjust for inflation at around £90,000, they've actually held their value very well, given it's the most expensive car on the list starting at around £47,000 with 50 grand having a 2019 model with around 30k on it. The story on reliability is very similar to the Range Rover Sport so watch that again if you want to remind yourself. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, two things I want from you very quickly, let me know in the comments down below what your favourite SUV is and secondly this Sunday I will be at the London Classic Car Show if you want to attend as well on Friday, Saturday or Sunday the team of the London Classic Car Show have kindly offered all my subscribers a £5 discount code in the comments section below and the description as well. Taking second on this list is the SUV equivalent of the BMW M5, the F85 X5M, which on release was the most powerful all-wheel drive BMW ever made, thanks to its 4.4 litre twin turbocharged V8 engine that makes 566 brake horsepower, which will get it to 60 in 4.1 seconds, which is pretty good going for a car that weighs almost 2.5 tonnes. It's nice that BMW started to build M versions of their SUVs that weren't just M performance cars, like the M50D for example, but this was actually the second generation X5M which aimed to overcome some of the livability problems the first generation posed. It's more efficient by about 26% but also more powerful and has more torque than all the other cars I've mentioned on this list so far. It's also renowned for having actually very dynamic handling for a car of its size, though some owners have complained about the steering feeling a bit vague and it's suffering over bumps when compared to some of the more luxurious SUVs on this list. The interior is typically BMW M in how it looks, just with a tad more space thanks to its size, though again another complaint I've seen on forums is how many options there are to play with to try to fine tune the car. It's airing the side of too much optionality rather than being a nice easy make car go faster and louder mode and a make car more comfortable mode which is probably all you need in an SUV. This is actually the cheapest car on the list starting around £32,000 with 50 grand getting you a nice 2018 example with around 20,000 miles on the clock. Pretty good when this car was almost £150,000 new adjusted for inflation. Overheating issues have plagued this engine sadly and I've seen some owners heat wrapping components in the engine bay to stop the heat bleed which can lead to further problems. I'm a big fan of the G-Wagon, its history, its looks, how silly it is as a car and all the rest. But it's a bit of a pricey car and it certainly isn't particularly performant, even in 63 AMG spec, just because well I mean look at it. But the GLE S AMG is a proper super SUV considering its size, weight and massive 5.5 litre twin turbocharged V8 engine which uses 576 brake horsepower more than any other SUV on this list which will get to 60 in 4.1 seconds what an absolute monster I've spoken in previous videos about the ML55 AMG which is basically a straight line speed and power build by Mercedes to make an SUV as angry as they could and that car is basically an ancestor of this GLE it's also probably quicker than that quoted time of 4.1 seconds car and driver for example proved a stock one could do not to 60 in 3.8 seconds which is genuinely troublesome for some supercars like the Jaguar F-Type SVR for example which is just a tenth quicker. And the key thing that owners seem to note with these is they genuinely do feel smaller than they actually are, with more performance in corners you'd expect of a car of its size, and good responsiveness overall. I don't think it has the nicest interior of all the cars on this list, but I definitely won't question its performance. It's also the second cheapest car on the list, starting around the £35,000 mark, with 50k bag in Euro 2017 model around 30k on it, which is good considering it was around £120,000 new adjusted for inflation. The main problems I could find were electrical including key fob failure which wouldn't be ideal and a few other problems with infotainment. And so brings this video to a close I hope you enjoyed it mass thanks to the patrons their support and to you guys as well for watching but if like me you prefer smaller cars i.e hot hatchbacks then do click up here to find a bunch of incredibly fast hot hatches that you can buy for under 30k instead.